us here later, but we got some um, folks here. Heather, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I know you know Kathy, but um, yes. go ahead and tell us what you do and where you're at. Sure. So my name is Heather Browning with Colonial Benefit Group, and I am a full service insurance broker um, helping small business with employee benefit programs, medical, dental, vision, and life. And I also help individuals with health insurance and Medicare supplements. And thank you for having me, Miss Kim. Yeah, sure thing. And you, you're Colorado and California? Sorry, right? Colorado, California, Nevada are my primary states of, of um, business. Yes, thank you for asking. Yeah, sure. Um, and Kathy, Kathy does promotional products. Sorry, we, go ahead, Kathy. Oh, I did. I just started right. recording, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, Kathy Cottrell with Pop Promotions, um, providing uh, brand strategizing and promotional products and decorated apparel. And Chelsea. Hi, I'm Chelsea and uh, Chelsea Aiello, and I work for Gachina Landscape Management in the Bay Area doing business development and um, kind of running their social media programs and working with our website designer to get things up and running. So it's cool. Well, thanks guys for joining. I'm excited to do this today. Um, it's been about five, six months since I've done a webinar, so I'm uh, thrilled to be back uh, actually talking to people on these as opposed to just presenting at a conference where nobody is there <laughs> and you're like, I wish I could speak to somebody. So um, thanks again for joining. Again, Kim Naughton, I run the AEC Consultant Group. So we do marketing, um, website design, social media management for um, designers, landscape designers, contractors, um, home services. So basically uh, service industries is where we are putting our focus. I was in Colorado based there for 22 years, a lot of relationships, um, clients obviously there, but now I have moved to the Midwest. So I am now in Iowa and broadening my client reach with uh, some new areas here in the kind of Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota area. So um, with that, I'm going to get rolling into sharing my screen and uh, going over your marketing strategy today. Let's make sure I get the right one. Let's see here. Are you seeing a like PowerPoint here? Strategy goals? Oh, no, I went on my other screen. Okay, hang on, stop share. <laughs> Two screen madness. Okay, screen one, let's try that. Now, how about it, yeah? Do you see strategy goals, your marketing strategy? Oops, yes. Yes, I can okay. see it. Awesome, Sorry. thank you guys. I'm gonna nope. keep muting myself though, Kim, but yeah, I'll yeah. try to, you know. You're good, thank you, I appreciate it, okay. So wonderful. We are going to start chatting about this. And again, you know, I run into a lot of folks um, when we talk about marketing and a lot of the time people are um, either saying, hey, I know what to do. I just don't have the time to do it. Right. Or if I had the time to do it, I would do it, but I have no idea what to do. So it's kind of this chicken and the egg scenario. What's coming first, right? Do you have the time? Do you have the expertise? And then how do you put this together to be efficient in your business? And ultimately, you're probably trying to get your business to grow. So what we're going to go over today are some kind of high level points and then some really fine tuned tactics in ways that you can help get your marketing firing so it's helping your business grow. And so again, my role is really to inspire you with what is possible. We're going to determine though first what isn't working. Um, we have to identify what's falling through the cracks and what's, what's working well, but what's not, so we can create that change. But most of all, you know, not to just give plans and ideas that sit around and, and nobody does anything with, but we want to give you the really easy, you know, kind of meat and potatoes that help you make decisions on where we're going. So again, my name, Kim Naughton, the AEC Consultant Group. Um, we do basically done for you marketing. So we're branding, website design, social media, email marketing, um, helping you find the right clients for the type of work that you want to be doing. We got another one. Cindy's coming in. Hey, Cindy. So the first level of kind of this three-step process of really working on the marketing strategy is, is just a, a really basic understanding of marketing, okay? This isn't rocket science. This isn't like you have to go to school for 10 years and take courses to figure it out and know what to do. Um, it, it's really pretty simple, right? First thing you need to understand is you just can't be everything for everybody. 
um, stop trying, right? We want you to really hone in on who is this market that I serve the best? Who do I understand the most? And who can I serve the best? And those are really the areas you should be focusing on to see growth. Now, if you want to focus on everybody, you can, but it is going to be harder to attract those right clients because you have cast such a broad net. And I know you've probably sat in so many of these talks and people are like, you know, niche down, niche down, niche down, you know, who are you going to be working with? But I, I did it in my own business. My first, my first go and uh, probably three years ago was, was very broad. I'm like, I am doing everything for everybody. And it just, you know, you get much more response when you know that client prospect on the other side of the table hears you talking directly to them. So with that, we're gonna go over um, basically a marketing recipe, okay? It's a pretty simple concept. Let's say you have one big jar, right? And you're gonna put the rocks, you're gonna put the pebbles, you're gonna put the sand in it. And to do that, you really need to be as efficient as possible. So you put a little bit of rocks in, a little bit of pebbles, a little bit of sand, right? A few more rocks, a few more pebbles, a few more sand. Um, as opposed to putting all the rocks in and being like, oh man, I got no room for you know pebbles and sand. So when we look at this, I like to equate these kind of three separate jars as different pieces of your marketing strategy, okay? The rocks really being your relationships, your website. These are the pieces that are the foundation of your business and the foundation of your exposure out there in the world. The pebbles, this is the piece, you know, fills some gaps between the rocks, but these are really things that you do once a month. Maybe you make client phone calls, maybe you do outreach. Um, email campaigns are a perfect example. So once, twice a month, not that often, but um, it's filling the gaps in those relationships and your website as that foundation. And that sand, that's stuff you're doing three to four or five times a week. So that could be existing client outreach that you're working with right now. Um, it could be social media, right? You're just getting the exposure out there. So you have all of these pieces working together to really get you the most bang for your marketing. So the first one, again, just that basic marketing knowledge. Again, it's not deep, it's not intense, it's not um, overly you know, comprehensive for you to be like, I don't know where to start on this. It's just very simple, keep it diversified and know who your market is and what you can best do to serve them. Second piece of this is really defining your strategy. So when we talk about defining your strategy, you need to have an understanding of where you sit in the spectrum, right? Are you a brand new business and you absolutely need clients and you absolutely need projects and money coming in, right? That's kind of the, oh my gosh, face here on the left. Um, you're, you're probably at the, at the lower end of the spectrum and you want to do some massive growth. Now, the other side of the spectrum, you're kind of feeling like a rock star, right? You got great clients, you get great referrals. Um, you don't feel like you really have to um, do a lot of marketing for new clients, but what you want to do there is really get some good exposure. So we're going to go through three different levels real quick before we go into some of the, the real details here. Um, level one. Okay. So again, this is the, oh my gosh, maybe the new business person, right? Stressed about the project pipeline. They might be a younger business, but their need right now is to find new clients. Number one goal, find new clients. So that strategy is you need to market for those new clients. And again, a variety of tactics for you to meet that strategy, but this person needs to find new clients. Um, that middle level, right? You're somewhere between the, oh my gosh, and the, I'm a rock star. Um, you know, marketing could help grow your business. You receive good referrals, but you could receive more. You know, you, you would like to grow, right? You're not, you're not at the, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to pay my employees this month, but you're definitely not feeling comfortable in the business. So this need here is, some new clients would be helpful, okay? The strategy is to engage past clients. Um, this is definitely, you know, if they're getting referrals and, and feels like, you know, they're a pretty good place in their business, they've been in business for probably three to five years at a minimum. And then they have this past client list that they can actually go back to and find some great projects moving forward. And that third level, who we're kind of calling the rock star here, right? They don't actively market for new clients. Okay, they're not doing SEO campaigns. They're not doing pay-per-clicks. Um, a majority of their business is coming from word of mouth. So they're doing a great job out there from what they do. People know them, recognize their trucks. You know, they might have 30 crews running around a city. So they're really easy to see um, who they are and what they're doing. Now, what they need is basic exposure to keep up with the competition. So they're not trying to get, you know, 40 new clients this season. What they're trying to do is just keep their name out there because they, they're, they're established, they're doing a great job, 
and they now want to keep up with that competition out there. So their strategy is to really stay top of mind. So when it comes to the marketing strategy, you know, kind of sit back and think about your business, right? Where do you, where do you fit? Must you find brand new clients or do you have enough of a history in your business where you can go back and engage your past clients? Um, or are you at that comfort zone where you just need to stay top of mind? You don't want to fall off the radar. You want to keep sending the emails. You want to keep doing social media, um, updating your website, right? You want to stay top of mind. New clients are great, but it's not your number one priority by any means. And there's, there's all kinds of things we can go into each of these levels, but you're just getting a snippet of this to go in to the next piece. <laughs> Actually, I need to see my time. There we go. Good. And anytime you guys have questions, please let me know. Okay. Raise your hand um, or just holler, unmute and holler will work. Yeah, exactly. Kathy, a little dance works great. <laughs> so now the next piece is, okay, so what tactics do I need to execute? And as I mentioned, right, those last three levels, each of them have a different kind of recipe of what are the best tactics to execute for where they are. So we're not going to go into like really landing these tactics into each of those levels, but that's something we can have a conversation about on the side. But what I'm going to go through is basically a seven step marketing plan. So this is a, again, a super simple concept. Guess what? You start at step one, <laughs> right? When step one's done, you go to step two. When you're done with step two, you go to step three and you just keep kind of climbing the staircase of seven steps. Now, if you are, let's say that level one person, right? And you need um, new clients, you may be tempted to go directly to step seven. You're like, step seven is going to get me new clients. Now to do that, you're skipping steps one through six, right? And what happens in there is you have to spend a ton of money. So by all means, go to the end, right? But you're going to be spending three to $5,000 a month on marketing tactics to get these clients. So what we're trying to do is say, okay, if you do step one and step two and step three, these build on each other and you're building this marketing background so you don't have to put out a ton of money in marketing methods that, that just you know are historically very, very expensive. So follow this plan and we'll get you to your goals um, in a nice, less cost intensive manner. So again, we're gonna go through some real tactics here to execute. So the first one is branding. Okay, so the new business start here, right? Gachina, you guys are established for quite some time. You're not doing this. Heather, you've had your business a while. Kathy, you've been in business 15 some years, right? You have your branding established. I mean, I see Kathy's right, you know, on her screen, like, hello, that's branding, pop promotions, there it is. And so the first piece of your branding is to really develop that brand. So you need to identify, again, that ideal client. We talked about not being everything for everybody. And then you need to figure out how do you solve their problems? Like, what are their problems? And how is my company solving these problems for them? Develop that clear, concise company message. You're really telling this potential client on the other side of the table again, why you're just the best fit for them. So develop that brand. Now for the branding, right? What falls under branding? Your company name, your logo, um, business cards, your signage, you know, print and digital marketing collateral, anything you're leaving behind, anything that looks like your company, anything you're mailing out, this is your branding. Your website is your branding, but he gets its own category um, coming up soon. Spoiler alert. Um, but again, you know, when you're looking at your logo and that sort of thing, look, look in your area. Look at landscape companies in the Bay Area, right? What are their colors? What are their shapes? What are their, is it a circle and it has a text around it? Well, shoot, great. Now we got six companies with that. I don't need to be the seventh company. So Try and position yourself differently, but that it still represents who you are as a company. So step two, okay? You got the branding under control. You know the name, you know how you're marketing it. Now we get to build that website. And again, there's a lot of areas of thought out there on website importance, okay? Um, you don't need a website. You just need ads. Great, you can go that route, you know? But again, a lot of times people are getting referrals and that is credibility. If you don't have that website out there and somebody gets a referral for a really great project to your company and you don't have a website, you're missing a client opportunity you didn't even know existed, right? So that person came and just left because they had six other referrals off of Facebook when they posted, I need a plumber. Um, and they went to those and they, they saw some actual people and 
who owns the company and that they are based in their area. So they decided to call those people. So a website is very important to the success of your business. Um, you know, to create your website, you have to determine that navigation. What are the important things people are looking for? Here on the right, I have, um, I don't know if I'm on top of this for you guys, I hope not, uh, the home page, right? Services page, project gallery, about us, contact page. A lot of people still to this day do not include an about us page. I wanna know who owns the company, right? I'm going to that next level as to if I trust you and want to call you to do work for me. Who's the ownership? When were you started? Um, what's your specialty? Why, why again, what problems of mine are you solving that I should call you? So kind of a, a navigation example there on the right. Um, to push it. Oh yeah, sure. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, you're um, good. In terms of website, uh, we have, we've been working on ours and kind of talking about a redesign of what we want to do. And I'm wondering if there are mm, current, uh, specifics for wording or how, because whenever I look at our website, I feel like it has so much to read and people yeah. don't have the time oh, to gosh. read. No one's taking the time to read. Yeah. And so we've been trying to figure out how to redesign the website. So there's less wording, but I'm just wondering if there's a, like a state, like an industry standard for like how long it should take someone to read one of your web pages from like, or how much wording yeah. should be on the page or. So he, here's again, a lot of schools of thought out there. My belief is your homepage should have a small one to two paragraph summary of all of your pages of your website. So when I'm scrolling down your homepage, I see a little bit about your services, right? Right off the bat. Um, I see a little bit of your project types that you work on. So I know if you're a good fit, if you're commercial, you're residential. Um, I see a little bit about your company. I see a little bit, you know, contact where we work, that sort of thing. Um, that's, that's my structure that I use with my clients because some people just go to a homepage and they won't dig any deeper. See, that, that's the problem, right? We're dealing with a, a huge spectrum of people that come to your website. Now, immediately upon landing on your website, you get about three seconds there to capture them. So if you're commercial maintenance, that better be rotating on words, you know, in somebody's face. <laughs> if you are high-end residential design, you better be showing a garden that looks beautiful. You know, I, I was talking to a electrical engineer last year, or uh, excuse me, a small scale, like basement remodel electrician is kind of what he did. And his homepage had like big power lines. And I'm like, well, this is electrical, but like, you don't do that. <laughs> like yeah. when I'm looking for my basement remodel, I'm not calling you because that's the image I'm given. So the image and the text of what you see right when you land there has got to speak, you know, and a lot of times people will showcase their teams which is nice, but it's like, I don't need a team. I need a new backyard, right? That's what I'm yeah. looking for. So I'm here for this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So show what you're doing there. Um, I am a big believer. You do need about 400, 600 words of text a page is what Google likes to see when they're ranking, you know, organically and that sort of thing. That's a lot of words. Um, I keep my paragraphs short. I, again, all those uh, about us page. There's six different sections on that about us page that lets the reader know, oh, that is what I want to read about. I'm going to go in deeper here. But if I don't want to read about it, I go to the next one. I go to the next one. So if somebody is digging deeper because some people are very high level and some people want to get into it. Bullets are helpful. Um, again, two, three sentences max in a paragraph. As soon as I start seeing that long paragraph, I'm like, I'm not even thinking about reading it. I'm just no, we need to like I'm and just scrolling. Done. Yeah. Like I don't want to see this. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Tim, I have um, you know, one of the things yeah. about our um our franchise website for what mm -hmm. I what I do is I've got my blog posts. I don't, I mean they're long articles. I don't expect anybody to read them, yeah. but they're absolutely critical for me to keep my stuff in a place where I can then throughout my process as I'm touching on people, it's like, hey, here's an article you might yes. want to read. And then I can refer them back. Yes. So I use it kind of like a library, mm -hmm. um, it, but it's long. I mean, those yeah. articles are long. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that helps your SEO, right? You have it yeah. living on your website. They're optimized. So people, when they're searching, hey, I need to know what kind of franchise is doing best right now. Boom, Cindy's got a resource and they go to your webpage and then they start prying around for more stuff. But yeah, definitely more information is necessary. And I would put it in the form of like blogs or articles or resources. Yeah. Because again, when you send, when you connect with somebody and you want to send an email out, hey, by the way, check out this great article on my website. Ooh, 
I yeah, I don't want to put that in an email. And I've seen no, people do yeah. that. It's like, ugh, <laughs> don't want to do that. Because right. I mean, the reality is I think sometimes it's just like for credibility, but if I want to be able to send them like a link to this really great article, and if you only read the first paragraph, yeah. I don't really care. It still establishes that I've got content exactly that you can find helpful yeah. I, I don't expect people to mostly go through it but if yeah. i didn't have a place to house all my articles and i would just be creating links in my OneDrive all the time i don't want to do yeah. that no 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 <laughs> exactly and chelsea kind of back to your question again i mean anything you're writing think about again who that ideal client is is it a landscape you know a building manager or is it a, a residential high-end homeowner right what exactly, what are their problems? What do you hear over and over again? And like literally just answer each and every one of those problems in your head, but then put it on your website and, and make sure that, you know, you are just, just like, we're totally having this conversation when you look at my website. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's a lot of content writing, you know, again, start with your outline, work on sections, give a piece to these people in the office, give a piece to this person. Um, really, you know, we're working on one right now and we have a lot of words we have, but it's like, are we ready for new words, right? Are we ready to develop this into something new and different than where we've been all this time? So that's been um, a fun part of that latest project. High the quality. good news, you only have to write it once and yeah, then it's right? there on your website, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, that stuff you wrote five, 10 years ago, it might be ready for a little refresh. <laughs> And Kim, I just have a comment. I was reading recently that specific industries have a certain look of a website that is critical. For instance, mine, because it's insurance and such, they're basically saying minimally, um, you know, conservative colors, very, yeah. um, no crazy fonts, no crazy colors. You want to be yeah. like high end. And I thought that right. was really interesting. And I, I know you've spoken to that before, but I just wanted to let you know that um, that's, that's something I've read more about recently. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, if you're hiring somebody for a creative process, I want to see creativity on that website. Right. But if you're hiring somebody for your finances, for your attorney, um, you know, accounting, those types of things, insurance, I mean, that's serious stuff, right? I, I, I don't know if I want to trust my accounting to somebody who's very flippant about their their model and their, their brand. Um, now I do know some people who do very well in that ballpark, but I would say it is definitely the um, minority in that realm. Um, pay attention. Cause again, you're talking to your clients. If I'm talking to developers, I'm going to design this website for developers. If I am talking to, um, you know, mid-size homeowners, I'm going to design this website for that group. Um, again, client testimonials, right? Gather what you can, um, call to actions are super important, not just like, hey, contact us for your free, you know, landscape quote, but like, give me something more. Like, why should I call you? Like, are you, do you not know what to do with your 10-year-old um, play structure in your backyard? Yeah, my kids are in high school. I need to get rid of that thing. I want creative ideas, right? Or how to maintain your, your outdoor water features, right? These are things that I want to hear about. So um, give those creative call to actions that really do, again, get into the head of that person you're talking to. Mobile optimized. I mean, I hope I don't even need to say that, but like it has to be done. <laughs> I still get on websites and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm on my phone and I'm having to like enlarge it manually to see what's going on because we're not mobile optimized. Um, ADA design requirements are very strict right now. Um, kind of a new thing to a lot of people it needs to be integrated into the design of your website. That involves text size, that involves um, contrast between backgrounds and the text. You have to have options of how people can modify um, what is on your website. So these are all really important things to take into consideration. If you don't know your ADA design requirements, give us a call, call somebody who knows um, because these are important things. And again, a lot of people are like, oh, I only design the website, I don't do SEO. That's fine. but you can design a website that has basic SEO framework done. It has your headlines labeled. It has, um, you know, a lot of the items already integrated into it. It shouldn't have to be an extra output of resources. So if your designer is telling you it is, that's fine. Know what that number is, but there's some basic things that can be done on your website as part of the design, which is what we do. Um, to get that ready to go and getting you some traction without spending money on a monthly basis for SEO work. Any more questions on website? Anyone, anyone? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So then online presence, right? 
again, we're going step three. So we got the branding, we got the website, we're now online presence. And this is really just getting everything jiving online. There, you don't even know how the hundreds of hundreds of <laughs> pages are out there that has your company name. And sometimes it has a comma LLC behind it. And sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it has your address in Lakewood. And sometimes it has your address in Wheat Ridge, right? And so when Google sees these discrepancies in name or in your address, it gets mad and it drops you in the rankings. So you need to get all of these things working together so you have these consistent index listings. Many services out there, 80 bucks a month, you know, 50 bucks a month, Yext is a good example how you can get consistent index listings managed on a monthly basis so you don't get those red flags with Google. Very important. Um, collecting online reviews is critical. Again, a lot of platforms out there will help you get these reviews. However, <laughs> you don't just go do work and like reviews like fall from the sky onto your clients. Like you got to put your client's contact into the systems. You got to say, hey, send the review, you know, notification to these people. You have to do some steps in there. You have to manage it. And if you don't, you're paying money and not actually getting the reviews. So make sure you understand what you're getting when you get into these. I know, Cindy, you have um, hair salon, right? When you have an invoice, somebody checks out, bam, they get their notification for a review, correct? Yes, within 24 hours, yeah. they get a little text and so we, we get reviews every single day and sometimes yeah. they're good. I mean, yeah, 99% of the time they're good and then we'll get a bad one, but I can head it off before exactly. it goes to Google yep. or yep. Yelp. See, so you guys have a, a really easy system. And again, if somebody's getting like one invoice at the end, you know, they haven't had that kind of, you know, just transactional experience to get that review to follow with it. So um, again, it's a little different from industry to industry, but you can just send an email, right? Here's my Google link. Could you leave me and could you, you know, once a month, you go back to the people you've worked with. I would suggest once a week, you go back to the people who you actually saw that week. Um, Podium has a great option for um, free reviews up to a certain amount a month, which is nice. You can text, you can email, keeps track of those. Uh, we get about one in 10. Every 10 contacts I send out a little short message, we get one review back. So not huge numbers, but um, again, if you're just kind of trying to grow a presence, it might be a good fit. Um, Google, social media, Yelp. Again, people love and hate Yelp. We well, and speaking from somebody who's got, like, I've got a transactional business and then I have a every once in a while, mm -hmm. I'll close a deal kind of business. Mm -hmm. I would never use my yes. review generator on the one where it's a once in a while thing. Right. I would yep. do it on the transactional one because I can guarantee, like, 10 to 12 good reviews a week. Exactly. It's so gotta then be I got like it. a thousand reviews. Yeah. You know, that's super <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, dealing with Yelp is so frustrating. Oh, I hate Yelp. <laughs> oh, hate Yelp. Every, they won't let us, they wouldn't let me change yeah. our name. So it just says Gachina Landscape Management. They won't let me put in parentheses or anywhere on there that we only do commercial, real commercial landscaping, yeah. no residential. So we get, I would yeah. say between 50 and a hundred requests a week for people just to come like okay. do their backyards. But I don't know. I'm like, I don't know how to tell you that we don't, yeah. like, we don't right. service those. Yeah. Well, I know people who literally pay Yelp just so Yelp doesn't bother them anymore. Like, I'll pay you money just to stop bothering me. <laughs> I feel like I should, I call them and she's like, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Like, okay. You're like, can I close this? I've closed this business. I've opened a new one. How about this? Like, does that work? Right. Oh, it's oh, so frustrating. It's a funny one. Yeah. And obviously Google my business, right? Make sure that yeah. is set up. Um, get your hours in there, get some photos posted in there, post weekly if you can, that helps you. I mean, anything you can do to keep Google happy, it helps you. So, you know, put some ideas in there for um, a weekly post and get that going with your social media. Next, we're going to do building relationships. So now, right, if somebody goes to look for you online, they're going to find some good information. They're going to find your website. They're going to find your reviews. They're going to start seeing these things coming together. Oh, there's my logo. I saw it on a truck. Great. So now what you need to start thinking about is how to build quality relationships. Um, obviously, again, we're still thinking about reviews, but referrals here go into a little bit different kind of a, a little tree branch, right? Um, one of which I'm, I'm kind of going to stick on that landscape industry here. You want to give referrals to companies that projects aren't a good fit for you. Exactly like you just said, Chelsea, you don't do residential design. So who is your high-end residential designer? Who is your mid-level? Who is your, your entry level, right? When somebody calls, kind of get a gauge, I think these two people are going to be a great fit for you. 
how much is that person totally going to appreciate that? And then when he gets those reviews, he's going to earn referrals and he gets somebody calling him for commercial, he's going to think of Kachina, right? So it's kind of this give and take, but the more you give out there to people, it, it's funny, it just starts coming back to you. So think about when people call that aren't a good fit, who do you send them to? Then at that same time, you know, expect to get some referrals from those people that projects aren't a good fit for them. And maybe you, you have phone calls and you've actually interviewed people and you have this list, you have a PDF file sitting there. Hey, you know, we're not a good fit for you guys, but let me send you this file. It's got all of our residential people on it. Great. And then maybe again, these other companies are like, that's a great idea. I want to do that for my people who call me so I can be of service to them. So any way you can be of service helps everybody in the long run. Um, and then obviously receiving your referrals from past clients, referral programs, um, you know, client appreciation, all of these things can kind of tie together to help your past clients think on the money, like, oh, you need a Lance? Yeah. Call these guys. Just this week, two people have texted me. Um, I need referrals for landscape contractors in Colorado. Here's who I'm sending out right now, right? Here's who I know is kind of in this realm of your size, your scale, your project budget. And then again, that client appreciation, whether it be gifts, whether it be events, when we can have them again, um, you know, what are you doing? So those clients, again, kind of that marketing recipe, it's the, it's the pebbles in there. What can you do on a monthly basis to let your people know you appreciate them? So they think of you when those conversations come up. Then the fun part, this is where people start usually breaking down, <laughs> right? They got a website, they got their Google My Business and they have some relationships and then they like sleep, like freak out, like, oh my God, it's marketing. I don't, I don't know how to move forward from here. So um, kind of back to that lady pulling her hair out. Um, but what you need now, you need exposure, right? And again, back to whether you're level one, two or three, how much exposure do you need? And if you're level one, um, you're a business who's new and you need clients ASAP and you need revenue ASAP. Social media, organic social media work probably isn't your answer, right? That's, that's a couple of months down the line when things are coming in and you want to keep your exposure up. But when you need clients right now, you're, you're going again, step six and seven. You're not necessarily looking at um, doing some of these tactics because, you know, email marketing doesn't really do you any good if you don't have an email list. Okay. Actually, it does you no good if you have an email list. <laughs> Let's just make that very clear here. Um, but again, if you're a level two, a level three, you want to get exposure, you want to maybe get some clients, but really, you know, keep your name out there. Social media is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Posting yourself, um, having somebody manage your account for you. Email marketing. I swear my first year, I think 70, 70, 80% of my clients came from my emails. It took about three days after an email went out, I would get a call of interest and we would have a conversation and it became a client. So email marketing is very, very powerful way to, again, once a month, pebbles in the marketing recipe, keep in touch with your clients and give them value, right? Not just like, hey, here's our special. Hey, here's our latest awards. Hey, here's this project we built. It's really pretty give people value. Otherwise, you're not going to want to open your emails. So what can you teach them? What can you tell them? What can you give them current events in your area about what great restaurant have you been to? Um, what's the best garden, um, you know, products on the market this summer? You know, what's the coolest flower you can think of right now that's blooming and you want to tell people about it. So give them these ideas. And again, having a campaign, if you can get these out once a week, amazing. And everybody's like, oh, I don't like emails that come out that often, <laughs> right? And it's, guess what? It's not for you to judge. It's for the people that get your emails. So when people are like, unsubscribe me, you know, I don't want these. I never signed up for these. That's fine. It's one out of 500. It's four out of a thousand, right? Don't let that impact your ability um, to get this really powerful method of exposure out to your people. Content creation, again, this is where Cindy was talking earlier. If you have a topic, write about it and write a 600, 800, 1200 words about it and put it on your, put it on your website, um, send it out to clients as value, put it in your email marketing, right? Look at my latest article we wrote. It's got all these great tidbits on this. You don't need to talk all about the article in the email. Cause again, email is just like a website. I don't want to sit and read six long paragraphs about what, what am I, what? No, you, you just. Give them snippets of here's things you can find from my email and take them places. Um, mailers, 
they're still a thing guys. <laughs> I sent out a big one last fall, Christmas or, you know, and 1%, 2%, you get the phone calls, you get a response back. Um, it, it's a very low return, but again, you send enough out, you get that return on those phone calls. What a concept, right? You want to pick up the phone and actually speak to somebody. Um, it is such, it, it is by far the most powerful way to connect with somebody. Again, much lower volume you can get out in an hour versus social media or email marketing or mailers. However, it has the most impact. So think about, you know, going old school with your marketing outreach. And then again, client appreciation is always a great way to get that exposure. Any thoughts, comments, exposure, any other creative ideas people are doing? I would add in text messaging. Oh, yes, 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 Cindy. It's been You're, huge. You just have to use yeah. it sparingly, sort of yeah. like a little bit less than email marketing mm -hmm. so you don't get on people's yes. nerves. Right. And it's funny because that is one, like in my life, I'm like, my text is sacred. <laughs> yeah. But again, in your industry, that is very effective. How many times you send out a text about, oh, we have some openings and then boom. Yeah, it fills so we, up. That's yeah. what we do and, when and I have an open some. spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can see who's the person that's ready for, you know, who was here three weeks ago and their kid needs a haircut now. That group. Yeah. Send it to them. Yep. Any other crazy ideas people have? Exposure? Can you talk a little bit more about client appreciation? What you yeah. Do? Yeah. 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 So there is a lot of fun opportunity. I should just maybe do a whole thing on that someday. Um, Kathy, right? Promotional products. I mean, what can you, what can you get to your clients that's something special and unique? And again, I, I really urge people to think special and unique here. Um, I, I, in the landscape industry, I always love the idea. I, I say it all the time. I'm like, I wonder if anybody's ever actually going to listen to me and do this, but like Mother's Day, right? Or, um, you know, hey, we're just going to deliver like a thousand flats to a hundred different clients. Okay. Not a thousand, 2000 or no, 200, 200 different clients, two flats per client of like white petunias. Just drop them like on, you know, maybe call and be like, Hey, we're dropping something off. Are you guys in town? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Boom. And they'll be like, you know, put a little note, a little stake on it and be like, this is so cool. I mean, granted, they got to put the petunias in the ground themselves, but I would be like, I just got free flowers. Like drop the, I would be like jumping for joy if I came home and found that. So um, just little things. And again, maybe they don't want to plan them and they give them to their neighbors. So then all of a sudden that good gesture just went to somebody you don't even know. And maybe your card's still stuck in there. And that neighbor's like, Oh, I love these petunias and I actually need to get some landscape work done. I'm going to call them. So little things like that, um, you know, poinsettias at Christmas, um, whether you want to do some things, or, you know, I always like sending things at times of year when it's not expected, you know, 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's, you know, what could you do to kind of stay out of the competition of the holiday gifts? Um, and again, you know, Kathy, maybe you can talk a little bit more to this, but this year has been a little awkward in the gifting because we don't really know where people are, <laughs> right? Is like we just get so many bottles of alcohol delivered to our house <laughs> like every day. Yeah. I was like, no complaints, right? No complaints. <laughs> every day, like, I'm like, okay. Yeah, when the office is kind of, you know, again, you guys are always going to be there and working in essential industries, but um, you're going to run into some engineering firms or developers where they're just not in the office. And it's like, how do I make sure something's getting to these people? So yeah, take it away, Kathy. <laughs> I'll let you touch on that. Well, I was just going to say um, <clears throat> um, a couple slides prior when you were um, outlining marketing, one of the things that I noticed that was left off um, that you may like to add is yeah. tang tangible products mm, yep. because that's a big piece of branding in marketing and um, all of the things that you just said all come packaged and all are mailable mm -hmm. from mailing, you know, especially for um, the landscaping and engineering um, areas as far as, you know, seed packets, you can send, you know, little water buckets, you can send um, all different types of uh, planters already boxed that, you know, there's so many different direct mail and they've really, um, the industry has perfected that in this last year because of COVID. I mean, they had a lot of those types of products before. Um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, but they have it even, even more now. But the other thing I was going to say is it's not always what you would imagine it to be um, specific to an industry that you have to have products like flowers or seeds or anything like right. that specifically because there could be other things that could could be malleable malleable with all of your information and still pique the you know the interest yeah definitely and i always think about um even for you guys chelsea would be you know again when we can kind of do this sort of thing but like if you got a, a small room at a fun you know semi-casual but nice good restaurant you know pizzas wine um, that kind of thing and had 10 to 20 of like your best, um, let's say like, you know, building management companies, right? You had a, a couple of people from each of those and you just have a great dinner. I mean, it's probably going to cost you five grand, right? Three to five mm -hmm. grand. But like, imagine how like you brought these people together who are kind of maybe, you know, they could learn some things from each other, but they might see each other as competition, but it's, it's kind of a, a fun way to, to get them together and you to get a little closer to them as well to, um, build that, you know, friendship, right? You're taking the relationship more to a friendship where they wouldn't think of not giving your name away. Um, that's just, you know, you want them to always be like, somebody says it, boom, you got to call these guys. They're the best. Um, they treat us well, you know, and you can always think of like sports games and that sort of thing. But if you even do uh, volunteer operations, right, you go into a, a shelter mm -hmm. or a, a food service kind of thing, invite your clients to join you. You know, a lot of people want to give back and find unique ways and they don't maybe want to do it on their own. Um, put that in your email every month. Say, hey, this is what we're going to be doing this month. And we would love for people to come join us if you want to. So people know those invites are out there, but just different ways um, of showing that appreciation. You know, can I just, can I jump back in? I just came up, just got a great idea too. So maybe you don't want to send something out to the masses or you don't have a budget that allows you to do that. Maybe you pick your top 10 clients and yes. you do something very similar to what Kim has offered to us right now in that you send something out to them that piques their interest. And you could do a Zoom if it's not, if right now you're not able to meet with each of these people individually, these clients, but you can share with them everything that you're doing right now in your business and why it might be important for them. So it could be something that you're really focused on that you send to only maybe 10 people because you can really only, you can market to the masses, but what you can really only focus on so many large clients that you really want, you know, that are bringing you closer yeah. to actually getting their business. So maybe you do something like that. Yeah even like a round table of sorts, you know, what's the latest in, uh, you know, what your problems are and the products and services that we're offering to, to help you guys overcome these problems and, you know, get a couple of managers together and, and have that type of webinar, Zoom, interactive conversation. I love it. Nice. But this is, this is kind of the fun part, right? This is the, again, that meat and potatoes of like how you're literally getting your word out there to folks. Then we get a little bit more strategic. We're on step six. We are so close to seven steps. <laughs> Business development, right? So this is where you're getting much more targeted. Um, who are those top prospects? Okay. A, who's my competition? I, I want to know that. Who's Who's got some clients that I'd love to have, right? Who are those targeted prospects? I got a list of 20. These are the people I really, to, a friend today just challenged me. Um, step out into you know, a couple of different crazy, crazy things, right? By the end of March, do these couple crazy um, reach outs. And again, a couple on my list have been there. I started a conversation six months ago, didn't follow up on that, you know? So who are those targeted people that you know need your help? Um, again, you can find out who needs your help by looking at websites, by um, seeing if they're active on social media for myself, right? I'm like, oh, guess what? They haven't done a post in two years maybe I should call them, <laughs> you know, they're one of the biggest landscape companies in Denver. Like, ah, I should probably give them a ring, right? What, what are you doing? You had it and then you stopped. So, um, you know, those types of things. So really be strategic on that. Um, again, those strategic relationships of who is somebody you can give work to, who is somebody that might give work to you, opening those doors. Maybe you need a designer um, to send some work to. So thinking about that. Definitely tracking the projects and the leads, where they're coming from, how they're coming in, so you can pay a little bit more attention to some of those avenues of exposure. Um, you know, always ask when somebody calls, hey, how'd you hear about us? Um, somebody fills out your form online, hey, how'd you hear about us? That sort of thing. 
And then, you know, oftentimes there's a bid process proposals out there that you can find um, statewide, citywide, national um, organizations, that kind of thing for getting work for your office. But yeah, much more strategic. You're like looking six months in the future, what's coming down the pipeline? Um, who are some people that are looking to their contracts up or for me, like a speaking engagement for this conference is coming up, keep it in my, in my distance, but like know when I have to get those submittals in on time. Tim, I have a question. Yeah. Would this be something like, um, you know, I have two businesses, so I talk yep. like two different things, but if I did with this, I, maybe this is silly, but I, I do, I have a scheduled email that goes out to people who haven't been in for haircuts in 15 weeks. Yeah. And I send them like a steep, either $6 off or 50% off, depending on what I want to achieve. Yep. Is that business development more so than like the other? I mean, it's just like what? going back to my database and just trying to get back people in who haven't been in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think business development for you is probably more of like, we've kind of talked in the past, like your Facebook groups that you go in and like, oh, okay. think about really connecting on a whole different level, not just people that have been, because those are already kind of in your pipeline, right? Yeah, they're already in my database. So uh -huh. yeah, okay, that uh -huh. makes sense. Yeah, that makes so you're, you're kind of, you're like, I want to target Lakewood mommies. Like those are the people I want. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. And then dun, 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 the top step, right? And like I said, you can go, did I see your face there, Chelsea? Were you making a poo-poo face? <laughs> no. Nobody likes. I've just paid struggled ads. with the paid ads and yeah. how necessary it is for like oh, yeah. a business, a B2B advertising. Yeah. Um, yep. But and also again, I was going to ask you quickly about business development. Um, oh yeah. One of the things we've been struggling with this year is we're uh, members of lots of different um, groups. So CACM yep. and uh, CLCA and IFMA mm -hmm. and OMA and all of these groups. And they're all, they've all been trying to hold things online. Yes. And yes. a lot of them wanted their membership in full again this year. And so we were part of the CACM. We did their, it's their law seminar yearly and you can set up in the expo room. And last mm -hmm. February we did it in the actual expo hall and it was right, amazing right. we had a ton of visitors yep. and we yeah. decided to take the like give it a whirl this year because we wanted to keep supporting them we didn't want to drop out but it was not great all their servers yeah. crashed when we went to go in there and Good. so we spent a lot of money being part of this but I'm just wondering yeah. from your perspective how necessary you think like if people if we don't go back to full group events soon I know the Bay Area is being very um slow about opening and very conscious yeah. about what we do. Yeah. And um, a lot of our business development people are not comfortable. They're older and some of them don't want to participate yeah. in things. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how important you think it is to continue to participate, um, how much you would spend, how much time you would put into just Zoom after Zoom or digital platforms right. Right. for things right. like this. Yeah, and that that is something, again, I, I work closely, like I said, the landscape contractors of Colorado and it, it's hard because there's a lot of big companies that are like I don't necessarily like need this organization right but like you are a big company and you are of this industry and so it is like this like a social club yeah. yeah right and it's like well where they go they're not here anymore you know and so it's almost like when you like back out people are like more scrutinizing as to you know whether you were there or not there so it is tough. Um, you know, it, it's, and again, how much do you participate in? Right. And again, a lot of those expos you need to know going in this, this just probably isn't going to run like those in-person events. And, and at some point these in-person events will come back. They will probably be a little different and you know how they work out, but, um, it is, I, it, I kind of hate to say this, but it's like, you have to almost think of that, that money going to that is like a donation, yeah. right? You're, you're donating to support that cause and they're, maybe they do lobbying and that sort of thing, right? Some, some types of stuff like that, but it's not so much really coming directly back to you. And so yeah. that, that is a struggle a lot of companies have. And again, if you're at that rock star level and things are good and you're just getting exposure, 
it should be a no-brainer check to be written, right? Like here's these three, you know, and maybe, you know, you narrow it down. Maybe there's only two organizations, right? You can't be involved in all six of them. I know, mm -hmm. you know, when I first, I was like, oh, I'm going to go on that and I'm doing this. And then, and then, you know, you kind of streamline like, okay, yeah. What am I able to put my time and energy into and, and have an impact? Um, but yeah, yeah, I think it's been hard getting the, it's, you want to put all the events on there, but there's only so many like virtual wine tastings you can yeah. participate right. in. Right. So I'm trying to like keep the BD team excited about wanting to participate once a month or every other yeah. month. But yeah. it has been interesting this year to sort of play out those scenarios and, and weigh whether or not it's worth the time. And there, there's probably one or two organizations that have done a pretty good job at some of those events, right? And you you mm -hmm. notice that and you're like, we're going to definitely stay on here. Now these other three, yeah. You know, and again, are they beneficial even when you do come out of this and, you know, we're, we're back to in person or are they just maybe they just aren't where your people are. And it's it's OK not to have to pay everybody to be, you know, involved yeah. in their cause. But um, if the cause is directly or indirectly supporting your business and there is available money to support it, then it is probably worthwhile to, you know, somehow some way that is coming back to me. It makes you know, it look good. Yeah. yeah. But again, prioritize, you know, yeah, it is always kind of a tough situation. And Kim, I would say too, that yeah. I've had people in, in that realm that have reached out and just thanked me for the support because you know, everyone's struggling now. And I think that they're going to think of that when all of this turns around or exactly. things modify. So yeah. I do think that that's a, a, something to keep in the, in your back pocket, like, Hey, you yeah. know, even though I may have not got my value or, or felt it in the last year, you know, what, what could be the potential on the table and the fact that these people are like, you know, this is an organization that supported us when not everybody could. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's worth um, noting as well. Yep. Yep. Definitely. I know I was just totally off topic. My sister's like, well, my YMCA membership, I'm like, have you gone in the last year and a half? She's like, no. <laughs> She's like, but I see it as a donation. I'm like, great. Okay. Good for you. You know, it's just like, I knew I wasn't going to be going there during COVID, but like they had to keep the doors open. I'm like, good call. We need the YMCA back when we're all going to the gym again. <laughs> so awesome. So yeah, paid ads and SEO. So before I even like click the next slide, which let's be honest, doesn't have a ton on it, but this is, this is like the crate, like the thing people don't like. Right. And again, my goal is to keep you away from step seven, right? This isn't like, I want to run to the finish and like bust through step seven. Like I want to keep you off of step seven, right? If you do the branding and you do the website and you do your exposure and your relationships and all this stuff, chances are you don't have to invest in paid ads and SEO. Just, you know, if something catastrophic, you know, I, some roofers I'm working with right now, Colorado, Denver, Central hasn't had a hailstorm in a couple of years they're in a tough spot right now. And so now they're looking at things like this, like, okay, we got to, you know, make some changes that hopefully by May, when we get a, a torrential storm, we'll change the tra trajectory of our business. But um, right now, this is something they're thinking about. So hopefully it's something, if you do have to fold it in, it's intermittent. But again, if you're doing those steps one through six, you can hopefully stay away from this piece. Because again, I mean, anybody says these words, I'm like, guess what? I'm out. I'm not helping you with it. I, I don't even know. Maybe call these people because 90% of people I've met, I just, it's hard to build a trusting relationship with because they won't tell you what they do and they tell you some things, but you're like, that's just general maintenance on a website. Like that's not SEO. Like how are you selling that as SEO? So it gets um, a little troublesome. But again, if you're that brand new business and you have to have clients and you're just launching and you have a ton of working capital, then yeah, you're probably skipping steps three to six and you're jumping right into paid ads and SEO to try and get something to come in and stick. Um, this is really, again, you're focused on finding new leads. You're not using this to, you know, you could do retargeted ads, um, but you're typically not using this to, you know, get in touch with your past clients. Because again, we've given you a lot of great ways to do that. Um, sales funnels, right? You have an opportunity out there. It's on a landing page and people can read about it and they click and get all the information, building your email list. Again, back to the sales funnel. These kind of work hand in hand. Um, paid ads. You got Google, pay-per-clicks, right? Um, it's the PPCs, Bing, social media. So think about your client. Who is it? A, where are they? And B, where do they want to be 
brought about this information, right? When I'm cruising Facebook, I don't know if I need to see plumbing ads. I just, I don't need to see them, right? And plumbing is like an emergency. I go to Google and I say, oh my gosh, plumbers near me, you know, plumbers in my area, pipe burst, whatever. I'm not just scrolling like, I should get a plumber. Now, haircuts for kids, yeah. If I'm on Facebook and I see that and I have a kid, ooh, I might take advantage of this. Oh, and she's got a great little offer. She's got five haircuts for 25 bucks. That's smoking deal. Um, yeah, sign me up, Cindy Rayfield, you know? So it's just, um, where are your people and what's, what's the best way to get their attention? And again, this can work for some people. Um, now, something to think about on paid ads, when you say, hey, I'm gonna give you a thousand bucks to do paid ads for me, people have a management fee, right? Oh, it's 34% of that. So only 600 and you know, whatever dollars is going to your ads, $340 is going to the management. So make sure whenever you do any type of pay-per-click type ad campaign work, you are understanding how much they are getting paid to manage and how much is actually going to your ad campaign itself. Um, very important. And then SEO, again, basic SEO work can be built into your website as part of a website design. So when people are doing some other work on there, it is necessary to you know do a monthly income, but there, there's kind of two parts of SEO that can be done for your website. So um, hopefully, right? You just don't need to go here is my opinion. But if you're looking for a large influx of new leads, maybe it's something you do pay-per-click ads for six months and see the exposure. And if that got you over the hump of where you need to be, then you're good. You can turn it off. Cindy, what you got? So I did, <laughs> I, you know, I've got my funnels going for my salons now right. and I spent money paying other people mm -hmm. a year ago, like a thousand dollars a month per store yeah. thinking, you know, after we opened. It was like May, June, July, you know, oh, I needed it. I needed it. I spent so much money on somebody else doing it. And then once I learned, then I paid for somebody to teach me how to do it. Right. And now I'm managing it on my own. And it's I, possible. I, it's possible. It's possible. The headache. Yeah. I mean, you have to get it just right. I mean, you know how much, I mean, how long it took me of procrastination yeah. Yeah. to get it done. Mm -hmm. But, um, I just say for that one, it's like being in the right place. Like I, now that I know that it works and I can manage it. Yeah. I don't need to do as much, as much other right. things, at least for that business, for my other business, it's, it's a challenge. You yeah. know, I don't know if I couldn't just jump right into a sales funnel necessarily because right. right. I mean, I got to build trust and yeah. I don't know. It's a whole different thing. I can yeah. offer 50% off on a kid's haircut and people go, yes, yeah, sign me up. Yeah. Right. Right. But, you know, if I offered somebody like, hey, here's how you go about finding your own business. Give me your name and your email address and your cell phone number so I can right. bug the heck out of you. Right, 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 right. They're not, right. it's going to be harder to do that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. that it's the, what's right for the business. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. But you're right. It can take a lot of money, especially if you got somebody else doing it for you. Man, I mean, one example I was presented last week um, for one of our the client, again, is uh 15,000 the guy is spending on pay-per-click and, and my clients was like what <laughs> like we're not we're not playing in that in that world right now and so again some businesses will put that much out because they got enough people to go out and do that work to bring in just a ton of work a month I mean it is just called quantity right like you are banging out projects but that's not, again, where, where my person was. And so it was hard for them to be like, well, this is our budget. How are we, it's, it's not, we're not even talking like, you know, anything in the grocery store to the grocery store. <laughs> like we're talking like a condominium to a banana right now. Like this isn't happening. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I guess my, my point on that too, so like, because I don't want to take away from the fact that sometimes you need to pay people for these things and they yep. need to be paid for them because it is value. But at the same time, it's like, know as much as you can first yeah. Yeah. because people will tell you a load of crap. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I, a lot of things I did not know going in on this. And I'm like, oh yeah. And it, something for you, Chelsea, you know, you were talking about your website, you know, hosting of your website, maintenance, security of your website. That is something people love to have you pay an annual, monthly, quarterly, huge number when the reality of what that costs to do that is not that much. <laughs> we have someone that currently runs our website and runs our SEO. 
Yeah. Um, but we've been working really hard um, on collaborating because he sort of does that all individually, but there's never a meeting with him and we never really see the combine results. our social media. Yeah, that's, a th I know that they have, yeah, yeah we let, we let one of our um, employees go last year and there wasn't sort of a replacement. And so we've been trying to kind of catch up and figure everything out together. Yeah. Um, but it's, I feel like that's something that should all be working together, like your website and your social media mm -hmm. and all of that as a, as a team. And I'm, so I need to meet with him and figure out um, what his plan is for the SEO and the website. But it is interesting. I see um, in our Google My Business, well, how many, how many clicks, that they, how many likes, how many clicks. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how that's translating into leads or right. jobs. So that's my issue with Facebook is that because we're business to business and we're not doing any type of residential or individual, anything like that, I can see how what the reach is and I can see how many people are involved, but I can't, and, or how many people have clicked on the link or the website, but yeah. how many, how what's that actually translating into dollars? Exactly. I just don't know how, um, yeah. how helpful it is. Yep. Yep. And a lot of, a lot of people will, you know, we've talked to a couple of firms, boy, there's a fancy dashboard and it does all this stuff, you know, and one of them yep. we were looking at and I was like, wow, we just started this program. And like, it's already like got stuff populated. Oh, it was populated off the social media work that I do for them. <laughs> I'm like, so, so wait, like, hang on. I'm like, so your dashboard populates the work that I do. <laughs> and it's yeah, all, it's all like, like the same, so that's the same thing. <laughs> and I did take I did take the level up Facebook. I went to level up uh -huh. Facebook last year for the small business council, and yeah. um, it was helpful. But it was a lot more small businesses, mm -hmm. uh, hair hair salons, yeah. Um, yeah. small graphic designers, things. And so it was yeah. hard to translate that into being because Gucci did start out as a small business, but now right. we're yeah. we're much bigger. And so it's hard. That's the biggest struggle I'm having is. Yeah, how to get to the companies that we want because those people are sort of unattainable. I mean, and I don't think they're scrolling Facebook or scrolling right, right, Google. Right. So that's sort of where we're. Yeah, it's it's at. interesting. Um, I have another one, the social media one coming up. Is it my next one? No, it might be two away. I think it's website and social media. But um, you'd be surprised. Like you would really be surprised. I mean, if they're posting to social media, somebody's paying attention right and if you have like again that that targeted business development list right 10 clients and you know you want to work with xyz and bbc and whatever all these you know i feel like all the business man building management names are like <laughs> initials anyways you comment on every post they put out there right here's kachina mm -hmm. oh man that's a great building we love shopping there Boop right? You comment here, you comment there. Um, we, <laughs> Heather's on this call right now. Heather is a, the master commenter of all time. Everybody notices Heather and where she's at. People have never even met Heather and they're like, Heather comments on everything. She's amazing. Like people notice yeah. and, and they just like, they know. And so you just keep poking and poking and poking and poking and then you start doing stuff and then they get on your email list and they start getting your emails. Like it just all kind of happens together magically. Um, yeah, but that's my official marketing term. <laughs> I like that. And I find LinkedIn is a lot more um, helpful for us specifically than Facebook because you can yeah. make direct connections with those actual definitely uh, people that work there. Yep. yep. And again, when um, you're on the LinkedIn, I mean, just talk to them like a real person. Hey, yeah. saw your latest project. Looks great. Yep. Would love to connect. I mean, when I get the four email, four paragraph pitch, I'm just like, I <laughs> Thank, thanks for not even saying hello like gotta go I just don't have yeah. patience for it's that. also teaching your team I think how to use social media for themselves so I always tell the baby team I'm like if you guys go out and you meet a new client when you get home make it part of your prog you know process to connect with them on LinkedIn hey it was great to meet you today yeah. um but getting that to yeah. do, getting people to be comfortable with that is a I know it's a it's new hard. world yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 well and again I mean if you just finished up work at some place and they have an Instagram, right? Post the picture of the guys, you know, doing the final cleanup, like, man, looks great here at, and tag that. I mean, you don't really have to reach out to the commercial people as much. Like, you know, it's their property. They want to rent a floor seven out to some great business. So any exposure they get is great. And so if you can do that on that commercial level and start tagging all the businesses, like we just left this one looking, you know, super fine yeah. and the grass is beautiful and 
yeah. no dead spots in the picture, boom, like we're off. Yeah. Here. I'm trying to get written into our contract um, photo opportunities up front because that's one of the things a lot of our clients are NDAs and we're yeah. not allowed any photos or any mention okay. of who they are. So yeah. that's been also another challenge. This challenge year. We have some sure. amazing things and I can't, I can't yeah. share it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm up against a few different uh, hurdles, but we're get we're getting yeah. there. I just, you know, it's yeah. good for me to get information. Yep. 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 Well, yeah. So again, paid ads, SEO, and I mean, again, what I'm learning here is a thousand bucks on paid ads isn't going to get you very far. Take out the management fee; it's not getting you very far. So if you're looking to get in here, you know that probably fifteen hundred. Um, again, pay attention to people's management fees. You start seeing 50% management fees. I would look elsewhere. I know some people that are around 20. I know some people in the 30s, but man, I also have met people in the 50s. So it's it's tough to be like, so I'm going to give you 2,000, but only a thousand of that is going to manage my stuff. And again, it's monthly, monthly, monthly that you run the ad. Now, like in Cindy's case, if you could have somebody set it up, teach you to maintain. You're not having to do that monthly, monthly, monthly throwing away of that. That's great. But again, it's going to take some effort on your end to uh, definitely close those gaps. So good, guys. So again, back to kind of the broad level marketing strategy, right? Just that, that general understanding marketing knowledge. Again, don't flip out that you don't have a degree in it, so you can't do it. That is by far the furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> Anybody can handle their marketing. Um, next, define your strategy, know exactly where you are in that business and what you need. Do you need new clients ASAP? Are you looking for some referrals, but maybe you got some old clients you can really use to get some new projects, or are you just looking straight up for good exposure? You want to stick with the competition, um, not fall off the radar and have good exposure with your people and new prospects. And then the seven step marketing plan, branding, website, online presence, relationships, exposure, business development, paid ads, and SEO. So um, that all folds into those tactics to execute. So don't just be like, I got a strategy and then do nothing. Like we want you to take that strategy. And again, whether you're level one, two, or three on that strategy, you're going to have a different recipe out of the seven step marketing plan that helps you the most. Um, paid ads and SEO might help that level one person that needs the stuff, right? So all of this has an interwoven relationship. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I got some handouts I can send out to you guys if you are interested. Um, I have the seven step marketing plan, social media content ideas, website checklist, online presence. So yeah, anything else anybody has going on? We got the webinars coming up here. Oh, it is social media next. Okay, good. Social media website, email marketing. So yeah. Anybody? It was really good. Thank you, Kim. Awesome. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining. Thank I you. appreciate it. And uh, any contact information, you can find me on any of these things, <laughs> any of these little bubble devices. So, and we will, um, I have some other webinars posted on the um, YouTube channel that you can get from the website. So if there's anything in there that you just want to catch up on, feel free. So thanks all for joining. I will stop my share. You guys have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Kim. It was, awesome. it was awesome. It was good. <laughs> Bye. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate nice it. Healthy. Thank you, guys. You guys, take care, Kim. Bye. Bye. You rocked it. Oh, thanks.